Welcome to Imam Hussein, Humanities Champion, a series of short lectures that will hopefully give us a clearer view of who Imam Hussein salam is. What is it about Imam Hussein? What is it about him that attracts people towards good morals and ethics and in freeing themselves from the shackles of ignorance and pride? I'm Muhammad Amin Ahmadi and I'll be your host for the series. What we plan to do is begin right from the beginning. As in, what we want to try and do is answer certain questions that would enable us to understand what it is about Imam Hussein that has left historians, that has left politicians, scientists, philosophers shocked, has left them in a way um, speechless as to who Imam Hussein is and what he has done in order to attract people towards Islam. We don't just want to look at Imam Hussein salam to say, for example, Imam Hussein did this and that and he was a great person and so on, that these uh, morals and ethics just roll off our tongue. That's not the aim. The aim of the series is to fully understand. Now, when I say fully understand, I don't mean uh, to fully understand Imam Hussein, who he is and what he did, because we can never fully understand him. He is beyond our ability to understand and to picture what he actually did for Islam. But what we will try to do is to understand it as much as we can so that only when we understand can we make changes, can we really adapt ourselves and adopt those teachings. In order to do this, we'll start right at the beginning. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean, for example, uh, at the beginning of Karbala? No. Does it mean, for example, his birth? No. It means way, way before that. What we want to do is we want to look at the lineage of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. To look at his parents, to look at his grandfather, to look at his great-grandfather, to look at the people who actually moulded Imam Hussein alayhi salam to who he was in order for him to be able to do and carry out what he did. So what we will do is we will look at, for example, first his lineage, then his birth, and then the events that took place after his birth, so throughout his childhood. How did he support, for example, the Prophet in his mission? How did he support his father, Imam Ali salam, in his mission? How did he support his brother, Imam Hassan salam, during his imamat? And then finally, we will look at how Imam Hussein himself, what he did during his own imamat to be the figure that he is today. After looking at that, we will then finish and summarize everything concluding how his stance, how his character caused ripples in today's world, where 1400 years later, you are still looking at people who are moved by him, that their eyes are opened by the light of his message and their hearts are shocked back into existence. Imam Hussein's sacrifice wasn't just any sacrifice we will come to see that his sacrifice is mentioned as the greatest sacrifice in history full stop. Now you might say that's a big statement to make for someone to sit here and say that Imam Hussein's sacrifice was the biggest in history full stop. How can you say such a thing? Who's saying such a thing? We'll come to see that these are actually the words of none other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he mentions this in the Quran and we'll come to see that. Now, this series, the aim of the series is to empower the viewer. So it's to empower yourselves, to enable you to give your thoughts and your feelings and your opinions as to what Imam Hussein means to you. What have you learnt through his message? And how have you been able to adapt your lives or to adopt certain teachings that you feel has enabled you to better yourselves and grow as people. If at any time um, a viewer or somebody would have a question that they would like answered, then please forward that to us and we will also look at that and look into answering the question in the best manner, inshallah. 
Now you might be asking yourselves, what does, for example, the lineage of Imam Hussein alayhi salam have anything to do with his sacrifice? I mean, it was him on the day of Ashura that sacrificed what he did. It was him that uh, carried out the stance that he did. It was him that sacrificed. What does his mother have to do anything with it? His father, his grandfather, his great-grandfather. Who, did, who do these personalities have anything to do with what happened in Karbala? We live in an information age. And this means that information is readily accessible for anyone. All you have to do is go with a few clicks of the button and you bring up any kind of information. You can research anything, you can see the science behind things. So what we will try to do is we will try to bring the science behind everything we say and evidence it so that we're not just talking for the sake of talking but we're talking with evidence and we're talking with information that people can then understand the reasons behind it. Science says that there are two factors that really have a bearing on the stance a person takes and the way they develop and grow. These two factors are called nature and nurture. Now the nature of a person is the genetic makeup. So the reason why we will go back and look at the lineage of Imam Hussain is to see what genetics were passed down through his bloodline to him that enabled him to become the character that he was. Now is it just the genetics? Because of maybe about 50, 100 years ago, that's all science ever said. It was that genetics is the be-all and end-all. That what your father and mother passed down to you is what you will be and what you will only be. Yet today science says or paints a very different picture. It says that not only is there the nature, the genetic makeup of the person, but also the nurture. The nurture means how that person has been brought up. The environment, the different interactions they've had with their environment, with the people, even the food, the living space, the shelter, the communications, all these different things are the nurture of the person. And we will shed light on how Imam Hussein became Imam Hussein through also the nurture side. If we were to put a percentage on nature versus nurture, and say, okay, what kind of percentage makes up the nature and what kind of percentage makes up the nurture of a person? It would probably be about 20 to 30 percent nature, in other words, genetics, and 70 to 80 percent nurture, so the upbringing of the person and the interactions with their surroundings and their environment. How can we make such a statement? Isn't genetics more important than this? than the nurture, than what a person eats, or what they see, or what they hear, or where they live? No. And we know this because if you look at feral children, these are children that have been brought up. For example, they've been born by humans, so they're a human. But they've been brought up by either wild animals or some kind of tribe of animals. Now, if after a few years, you are to go and to visit that child, you will see that the, uh, the way the child interacts is very, very different to a normal human being. You see a human being in front of you, but then when you look closely, you see that the child walks like the animals it's been brought up by, for example, on its all fours. So it will crawl, for example, or, or move in a manner that the animal moves. It will eat what the animal eats and in the manner that the animal eats. It will communicate with those animals, so it will communicate through sounds, through certain things that, to us humans, it's uh, something, you know, uh, different, something that we humans would see, this is not something that a human would do. So this itself is proof that nurture has a much bigger bearing and weighting on the way that a human develops and the way that they grow more than their genetics. Now, it's not just enough to say that, for example, okay, Imam Hussain alayhi salam, his mother was Hazrat Fatima Zahra alayha, and his father was Imam Ali alayhi salam, finished. So, therefore, 
two perfect people creates a set of perfect genes and Imam Hussein Islam is therefore perfect. No, no, no. We have to also dig deeper into why has Fatima Zahra Salam alayha, why she is who she is. How was she brought up? What certain events in her childhood, in her upbringing, enabled her to be able to pass these very uh, points of nurture down to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And the same with Imam Ali alayhi salam. So what we want to do is we want to take a very in-depth view, not just to look at Imam Hussein for Imam Hussein, but to look at Imam Hussein and to look at how everything else around him enabled him to become who he was. What we plan to do is spend a few series or a few lectures looking into first his mother and then move on to his father and then move on to his grandfather and his brother and to see how these people enabled him to become who he was. So please join me in the next episode where we will begin to look into the character of Hasta Fatima Zahra alayha, and to look at how she was such a perfect role model for her son Imam Hassan Alayhi Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.